Now, I have a theory. I don't think Sally was always this hated. I think this came with time. Because I would think Sally would be a more appreciated character since her show restored some dignity to the franchise. After the adventures of Crackhead the Hedgehog. But yes, my theory. I think a big issue for Sally is she hasn't done anything major outside the comics since her TV show got cancelled at the end of season 2. After two decades, the kids who once watched her on Saturday mornings are pretty much all adults now and have either dropped out of the Sonic fandom or don't keep up with current events like they used to. And by the time Generation X started, the ignorance around Sally shot through the roof. And for this, I blame Sega for not reintroducing her after all this time. Now, of course everyone is entitled to their opinions, and we don't have to all agree. I mean, there's plenty of reasons to love Sally, and there's plenty of reasons to not like Sally. As a fan, I admit, she's worked my nerves a bit too. But then there are points the hate goes too far. I mean, it would be nice to actually look up Sally for once and actually be able to find something positive. But this is not the case. Now, from my understanding, there's two main types of Sally haters. Ones that didn't enjoy the old works of Sega of America. And Amy Rose Bratz brought up on Sonic X that wanted to turn everything Sally related into a fight. The problem with romance sometimes is, people will start up shipping wars. And I hate shipping wars, because it's an excuse for retards to go full retard. For these reasons, Amy fans are the first ones I blame when trouble starts. For every trollish comment I see on YouTube, I blame them. For every hateful image I see on Google Pictures, I blame them. For every dislike on a Sally Acorn related video, oh yeah, I blame them. Now do you see what I'm talking about? Amy Bratz written all over it. And I'm guessing that tag at the bottom is supposed to make everything better, huh? Okay, Sally is not the most popular thing ever. But I don't think she did anything to deserve this level of hate. This douche right here is also an Amy fan, but a really ignorant and biased one, who went on a 20 point hate spree about Sally, and you can tell he didn't have a damn clue about what he was talking about. He got such a lashing for being stupid he had to disable the comments. But that's okay though, this is why I make these videos, so I'm gonna answer back truthfully with 20 hateful things said about Sally, gathered from him and other places around the web. They are not in any real order, so let's just count down from 20. Number 20. Sonic and Sally can't have kids because they are not the same species. Oh, so what you're saying is, in the Sonic universe, a hedgehog and a squirrel can't have children, but... But it's perfectly fine for an angina and a bat to have children. Or, a fox and a plant can have children. As long as it's not a squirrel and a hedgehog, because that's just blasphemy, right? Or maybe you are trying to apply logic to places that never made any fucking sense in the first place. The main hero is a blue talking hedgehog that wears red sneakers and runs 200 plus miles an hour. He collects chaos emeralds to stop a madman from taking over the world. Can you please tell me where the fuck is the logic in that? Alright, there is no logic. Because it was never meant to be realistic in the first place. Therefore, a hedgehog and a squirrel can have a child as long as the writer wants them to. Number 19. She's naked. Mm, you taste that? It tastes like sexism mm. with just a hint of bullshit. Gadget, you're not wearing pants. None of you wear pants. How come it's okay for you boys? The answer is kind of simple, Gadget. Boys are allowed to get away with things girls can't when it comes to the human body. For example, a guy gets to walk outside topless while a woman has to cover her breasts before she leaves the house. The same sexism can be said for cartoons. For decades, people have always looked past the ass naked male character. But when a female character does it, everybody freaks out. The issue here is, Sally is an animal, not a human. On top of the fact she's already covered up by her fur. If I don't see no nipples or a vagina, I don't see a reason why I should give a damn. And oh look, Sonic's naked, along with Tails, Knuckles, and a couple of other characters, but nobody's got nothing to say about them, huh? Anyway, it's old news now. Sally got a redesign and finally got some clothes, just like you wanted. So shut the hell up about it already. Number 18, Sally sucks because she doesn't have superpowers. She don't need superpowers. With all the skills she has on her resume, she's more useful than Sonic most of the time. And oh, in case you are new to this, this guy right here, he's called Batman. Please, do explain to us how one of the most iconic superheroes of all time sucks because he doesn't have superpowers. Number 17, Sally is a slut. She cheated on Sonic. Wrong, sir. Wrong. In the Archie comics, besides Sonic, Sally has only had two other relationships. Sally and Jeffrey had a brief relationship during a period where Sonic was presumed dead. This relationship fell apart because Sally still had feelings for Sonic. 
Sally and Monkey Kong's relationship take place after her and Sonic break up. And once again, she can't hold a steady relationship with anybody else but Sonic. Oh, once again, everything is Sally's fault. How dare she have other relationships away from bonehead Sonic. Let's just forget about the fact that he dated damn near every girl on the block. And the fact he stole one of them from his best friend. Number 16. Sally's voice was annoying. The hell of it was. Bias and stupid is no way to walk through life, folks. While characters like Sonic and Antoine had an out of place voice, Sally had one of the best and possibly the sexiest voice in the show. Also, do you not know who her voice actress was? It was Kev Soki, the same woman who voiced both Lola Bunny and Fifi Le Fume, as well as numerous other popular cartoon characters. There's some things you simply just don't do, and you don't diss Soki. Number 15, Sally is a bitch for being mean to Amy. Remember how I was talking about how the newer generation of Sonic fans are kind of uneducated? This is an example. In what shape or form has Sally ever been mean to Amy? Let's set this straight. Sally was not being mean to Amy. She was concerned for her safety. At this point in time, not only was Amy very young, she also had no experience in battle. And no, Tails was not above the rules either. Sorry, Tails. This mission is too dangerous. Huh? But I thought... I told him he could go, Sal. Sonic, he's ten years old. Hey, he's passed three tough Freedom Fighter tests. I was doing solo missions when I was ten. Uh-huh, right. Without permission. He can come with me. I'll be responsible. <laughs> That'll be the day. Excuse me? Fine. You be responsible. The way cool! Oh, look. He's growing up. Yes, I guess he is. Just be careful, honey, and do what Sonic says, okay? Okay, Aunt Sally. The Archie comic where Sally and Sonic are wedding each other while Amy's on her knees crying is the most fucked up thing in the world. Now, while this comment is more directed at Archie than Sally, it's also another over-the-top angry comment from an Amy fan with an obsession with seeing Sonic with Amy. But yes, I will agree. Archie used Amy as a device here to mislead people into thinking Sonic was getting married to Sally. Truth was, it was a wedding for Antoine and Bunny. Thank you for not researching! Number 13, Sally is shoved down our throats. No, she's shoved down your throat. I'm still sabering. While Archie does give Sally a lot of time, in the comics, that's the only place she's shoved down your throat. And no one put a gun to your head and said you had to read the comics either. But since we're on the topic of shoving down someone's throat, this chick not only gets to appear in the comics, but she's appeared in damn near every game and every TV show since her redesign. So let me make it perfectly clear. Sally Acorn does not have time for that noise. Step off, bitch. Number 12. She thinks everyone loves her. Well, that was definitely pulled out of somebody's ass. Um, she really doesn't. You're getting her mixed up. With her boyfriend, Sonic the Douche Hog. Sally isn't very smart. She always needs help from Nicole. As the leader of the Nighthole Freedom Fighters, she's actually very smart, thank you. I've already listed a good number of her skills already, so I'm not listing them again. You can either watch the video again or go look them up yourself. Nicole was the only real advantage the heroes had against a fully equipped Robotnik with an army of machines at his disposal. Also, please do try to go a full day with zero technology and see how that works out for you. Number 10. She's bossy. And I kid you not, this is one of the excuses for why people don't like her. Oh no, not bossy! Heaven forbid! That's like one of the worst things you can be! You're supposed to always be rainbows and sunshine and cupcakes! Perhaps you're new here. That's what a boss does. They are bossy. They give you orders. She's leader of the Nighthole Freedom Fighters, so technically she is boss! On top of the fact she's a princess. Which means she's gonna be queen one day, and I would fear for the future of Mobotropolis if she wasn't bossy. Number 9. Sally is furry eye candy. I cannot tell a lie, father. Sally has a lot of fans in the furry fandom. But you wanna know the irony about this? For all the heat Sally got on her old attire, and just the vest and boots alone, she looked a hell of a lot more presentable than that hooker you got running around you call a family character Rouge. Number 8. She's a selfish bitch. To each his own. Because I can think of another selfish bitch myself. No seriously, people really need to think before they speak. Because if you're calling Sally selfish, that will contradict with the fact that she's a Mary Sue. 
and she can't be both because Mary Sue's a perfect and selfishness is a flaw. Now I know! And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Sally can be a lot of things, but selfishness is not high on her list. A selfish person would have never formed the not hold freedom fighters and would have stayed hidden while Dr. Robotnik continued to dominate the world. Sally loves her people very much and is willing to lay down her life for them. For the future of her kingdom, Sally was willing to marry Antoine, who she usually despises. It turned out this was evil Antoine, aka Patch, whom all along was poisoning Sally's father, and who managed to get Sonic and her brother arrested. Let's not forget the fact that Sally gave up her life in order to save the planet. She found out Eggman had a weapon that he was about to use in order to roboticize everyone on the planet. With time running out and nowhere else to direct a beam, she set it on her location and took the blast head on. And in return, it turned her into Mecha Sally. Number 7. My friend hates her, so I hate her. This is by far one of the dumbest damn ones on the list. Because it proves we got more Indians coming up and not enough chiefs. We don't seem to realize how blessed we are sometimes to have a fully functioning brain that allows us to think for ourselves and make our own decisions. And what a better way to say fuck this blessing by allowing someone else to make your choices for you. It's not a joke. It's sad and scary as hell. Hitler was able to cause a lot of damage because dumbasses couldn't think for themselves. This means you probably never even once read a Sonic comic or even watched her in a TV show. You probably know zero about her. If all you know, she could have been your most favorite Sonic character. Even the best of friends disagree at some point. And if you think that type of behavior is acceptable, I pray that you never run for office or even breed. Number 6. Sally is the color of poo, therefore she sucks. <laughs> Oh, you guys. You're the very reason people say this franchise should have died a long time ago. And the five year old insult deserves a five year old response. <laughs> Number five Sally is selfish because she stole Sonic from Amy. Okay, first and foremost, you can't steal a willing person from somebody. People are not objects. Secondly, the Archie comics are based off the Saturday morning cartoon Sonic Saturn, and these right here are the original six, the original family. And oh yeah, let's not forget to mention, Sonic and Sally make up the original Sonic couple. They were together long before the Sonic Amy bullshit was created. Also, there is a large age gap between Sonic and Amy. Amy in the comics is 12, Sonic is about 17. Amy is jailbait. Here's what kills me about you Son Amy fans. You don't seem to realize how spoiled rotten you are. Again, you get Amy in the comics. You got her in Sonic X. You get her in just about every Sonic video game to date. But it's never good enough for you. And then you got every excuse in the book imaginable for why Sonic and Amy are official. And once again, let me clarify, I'm not talking to every Sonic Amy fan. I'm talking to the radicals that always want to throw a fit whenever there's a monkey wrench thrown in their fantasy. Sonic Amy logic. If Sonic runs from Amy, oh, he's just being shy. And I'm going to tell you right now, that cocky blue bastard has never once been shy. If Sonic decides to be mean to Amy, oh, he's just covering up his feelings. If Sonic decides to be nice to Amy, oh, that means he likes her. If Sonic decides to be affectionate with any other woman, all of a sudden, they're not canon. Oh, she's not official. Oh, they're not serious. I have to move on, but I will say this much. No matter how much you crave it, Sega is never going to come out and tell you Sonic Amy is official. Nor will Sega ever allow Amy to have the same relationship Sonic has with Sally. Amy wants a hug? She can't get that hug. But Sally can get that hug. Amy wants a kiss? She can't get that kiss. Sally wants a kiss? She doesn't get a kiss. She gets to make out with him. Amy wants marriage, she can't get marriage, but Sally can get marriage with two kids too. Amy wants kids. <laughs> Number 4. Sally wasn't created by Sega, so she's not canon. Woo, I tell you, that word canon is abused among fans that want to add their own twists onto a storyline. First and foremost, she's canon to the TV show and canon to the comics. The Sonic Universe has more than one canon. Secondly, Sally was created by Sega of America and is licensed by Sega of America. Archie purchased her for the comics, which means Sega has the final say. And if they so choose, they could snap their fingers and Sally would be right in a video game, whether she fits in or not. 
Number three, Sally is mean, rude, and sarcastic. Therefore, she can die. The future leaders of America, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give them a hand. And, oh, wait. That was sarcasm too, wasn't it? Let's go back to the picture of Sally giving Amy a wedgie. Now, have you ever met a person that hated somebody so much that everything that person did was just flat out wrong? That seems to be the unfortunate situation to Sally, because now it's just bad to have a personality that's not a total airhead. A strong, independent woman that won't chase around Sonic all day long and praise him when he's acting full of himself. Sally and Sonic make up a balanced couple. For Sonic and Amy to get together, Sonic's head will explode from overload of ego. Number two, she's a Mary Sue. Ah, the Mary Sue argument. At last we meet. Now, I had to look up Mary Sue in order to get a full understanding of the definition. A Mary Sue, a person with a hot body, a hot bod, check, popularity and intelligence. She has both of those, check, check. Upstages everyone, check. And last but not least, Falling in love with the Arthur's favorite characters, and apparently that is Sonic, so that's a check. Wow, an actual reasonable argument against Sally that doesn't make me want to punch a baby. But, while this is the best argument on the list, it does still come with its flaws. Now, for some people, a Mary Sue can be annoying. Now, apparently, if you're not a fan of Sally, you're going to be able to notice that she's this more perfect character in the story. But of course, if you are a fan of Sally, you're probably not even going to give a damn. Now, let's put a pause on number two and skip on down to one real quick. Number one, Sally is a bitch because she slapped Sonic. This is a common excuse for why people say they don't like Sally and not as good as they think it is. Now, when it comes to this Sally is a bitch because she slapped Sonic argument, the problem with it is people are always seeing it from a blind hater point of view or seeing it from Sonic's point of view. But how often does anybody ever actually try to see it from Sally's point of view? From the age of five, all Sally has ever really known is death, loss, and destruction. In just a short period of time, Sally had lost her home, her people were enslaved, her father was trapped in a void, and her mother was believed dead. And despite what some critics say, Sally hasn't had a very good love life. Sonic has been the only one she's ever really been madly in love with, and he can drive her up a wall. Sonic has been in many situations where he has almost been killed in the line of duty. But the last altercation with Eggman around this period took Sonic out of the picture for a year. Believing Sonic was dead, Sally was an emotional wreck. With Sally's parents leaving temporarily, they decide to leave Sally in charge of the kingdom. With a big responsibility ahead of her, perhaps Sally decided to use this as an excuse to keep Sonic out of trouble. But when Sonic tells Sally he'd rather go chase Eggman, she lets out about 12 years of frustration all over his face. This infamous slap scene where people like to call Sally a bitch actually put cracks in the Mary Sue argument because it proved to everybody that she does have flaws. She showed that she can actually be selfish, wanting Sonic all to herself, forgetting that her priority was to stopping Eggman once and for all. Let's not forget to mention that she let her emotions get the better of her. Meanwhile, Sally's parents were in the audience like, OH SHIT! But yes, Sally shouldn't have slapped Sonic, but then sometimes Sonic needs to taste smacked out of his mouth. Sally hit Sonic because she loved him. She thought she lost the love of her life. All I'm saying is put yourself in Sally's shoes for once. What if you thought somebody you really cared about died a year ago due to recklessness? Only for them to return and get ready to do the same shit all over again. Anyway, I'm finished. My last few remarks are for those that plan on reading the comics. Quoting somebody else, Archie is Sally's world. Everybody else just lives in it. Sally is Archie's bread and butter. She is second to Sonic. When you read the comics, you need to be prepared to see a lot of Sally. If you're a fan of Sally, it might be a paradise for you. But if you're not a fan of Sally, you have no business reading the comics. Archie loves to spoil their princess. For a brief period, they even gave her her own spin-off comic. But man, I hate these comics. Why is it Sonic with Amy? Because whether you like it or not, everything don't revolve around Amy. Archie spent two decades building this girl up. And despite popular belief, she has two decades worth of fans that want to see her. It's not a joke. If something happened to Sally, the comics would probably fall apart. When Archie brought up plans to actually kill off Sally for good, not only did it piss off a lot of her supporters, but even Sega had to step in and say fuck no. So, sorry haters, Sally is here to stay. With that being said, I'm done. Peace.